recently he's uh yeah he's feeling it he's feeling the 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 time just drag on uh it's not fun for him he's a soft spoken kind of guy he's not a whiner or a complainer so when you do hear him on interviews people kind of wonder well does this guy want to get out of prison well of course he does he's just um not a not a whiner you know he figures hey he's doing better now than he was when he's being tortured in the La Mesa penitentiary so he's kind of thankful for that now, what, by the way, when he was being tortured, that was the same time that his mother was down there for the prison visit. And she told me, oh, the, the prison officials are so polite and so nice and respectful to me. Uh, it was so great. And the warden told me, oh, we're taking care of Andrew like my own son. And I told her, they're lying to you. And uh, it was during that time that they were torturing Andrew. So there you have it. So they're they're mistreating, torturing our our marine. Um, we know that he's still being held by these by Mexican authorities down there. What about the efforts, the wrangling to get him out? I mean, didn't the White House petition reach a hundred thousand? Have we heard anything about that? Have we heard anything about the the attorneys either on the Mexican or U.S. side of the case? I mean, where where is the where are the gears here? Where's the mechanism of actually trying to get him out? Well, the White House petition reached over 124,000 signatures. We've heard crickets from the Obama administration on that. Uh, so every letter has been written. I mean, Duncan Hunter, Representative Rohrabacher, Royce, a couple of others, they've all gotten into this, and they're doing what they can to help. They've written letters to, to virtually everybody possible. And uh, the president was lately with uh, President Nieto of Mexico, and as you saw in the, the, the press conference, didn't bring it up, didn't mention it. So there's the response, nothing. So the only the only possible response that, that has any value is economic. This is what worked in 1999 with Sergeant Brian Johnston. He was released from a Mexican prison for the same exact offense, having an AR-15 and a Beretta um, in Mexico by accident. And uh, the only difference was he was active duty and, and Andrew is inactive. Do you have any but sense of what, re- what what does the Mexican government want here, Bart? Is there trying, you know, are they trying to hold this out for, <clears throat> is there some carrot that they're trying to get in exchange here? What do they want? Well, all I can do is speak from personal experience, having lived in South America. You know, a lot of this is not really complex. It's not really um uh, it's basically fifth grade kind of mentality sort of stuff. It's just the opportunity to stick a thumb in America's eye. There is no other explanation for it. Now, I grant the Mexican people have every right to be furious over Fast and Furious. I mean, how would you feel if guns are being swept over across your border and people are dying? Well, drugs, drugs, guns, and cartel fear. members are sweeping across our border, of course, from Mexico. Uh, but. Yeah. And, Right, and Al Qaeda affiliate operatives and whatnot. But the so I, I yes. But the the this is an opportunity to have to display a trophy and they have a trophy in Andrew. There is no there is no reason why they're holding him really. I mean they can talk to you about their system, about the Mexican judicial system. It's been under reform since uh, apparently two thousand and eight. Uh, where some of the states have signed on to this transfer of inquisitional format to trial format where evidence really matters. But really, that hasn't taken hold in, in, in this area. And they can pick and choose whatever laws they want to obey. That's the reality of the judicial, judicial system in Mexico. You know, back in August of, of 2013, a judge just with a swipe of a pen released the notorious uh, cartel founder and the one who was convicted of uh, having Enrique Camarona, uh, Camarena, sorry, uh, tortured and killed, he was serving an effective life sentence. He was just summarily released from prison, just like that. Wow. Now, the what process? The, now, the VFW has this press release out today. They're calling for a boycott. Um, what other has has the Marine Corps gotten involved here? Who else is is trying to answer the call and 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 do something to get Andrew out? Well, the Marine Corps has thankfully uh, responded to Duncan Hunters and others others uh, calling for their involvement. Um, I I don't know. I haven't gotten the report yet from Hunter's office as to what specifically they are going to do. I wouldn't want to really guess too much, but I know that the Marine Corps has has pretty long standing relationships with the military in Mexico, 
and um, I would hope that something could be accomplished in the back channel with that. But that's uh, they're also offering legal assistance with the new attorney um, that uh, Joe Tamaresi has chosen. And uh, I don't know what his plan is yet. I mean, he has a he has a big media presence in Mexico for defending the ex mayor of Tijuana for uh, multiple weapons charges. He had 88 weapons in his home and almost 10,000 rounds of ammunition. He had 10 permits for those weapons, and then he was released after about four four or five days in in the same, in prison and gotten off completely. Three of those weapons were found ballistically to have been tied to murders. And he's been accused by the DA of Baja California for uh, for assassinating uh, an individual. So, you know, all of that, he gets off basically scot-free. And then you have a Marine who accidentally crosses over with no intent to commit a crime. And he's being held these almost three months now. And uh, can anyone listening right now, Bart, uh, what I remember when I had Jill Tamaresi on the show and, and you know, I've tried to. Get the word out here. Obviously, Glenn has been has been blasting this out across the country. Um, we, we the White House petition that's done now. It's over a hundred thousand. You said one hundred twenty four thousand. The White House crickets chirping. Uh, should people just stay on this? Write to their congressman. I mean, what what for those who want to do things? And I know because I get emails from people and and other uh, messages from people saying, "What can we do to try to help or at least try to keep the the story, you know, on the on the front page in some sense?" To be honest with you, so that politicians have to pay attention. What can they do? Well, Team Buck can definitely write to their congressman to support H.R. 620. That's just a House resolution to demand the release of Andrew. But I know that uh, Representative Rohrbacher from California has been uh, kind of quietly working on something uh, with Congress to submit, whether it be an amendment or a bill, to uh, halt commerce to Mexico. So calls to your congresspeople, uh, this is what works, uh, especially right now. Uh, But really, what worked in 1999 was the threat of economic, um, uh, of stopping economic activity to Mexico. That's what worked. There was the mere threat of that, that Duncan Hunter Sr. and Brian Bilbray did uh, back then. And uh, that sergeant was out of prison in a matter of, I think, just over a week. He was in there for a total of two weeks. Once they they started talking about stopping commerce to Mexico, Reagan did it many years ago. I mean, it's doable. All right, Bart Santos. Thank you, Bart, for uh, all your help on this. Thank you for uh, making sure that we stay on this as much as we can. And please, you stay on the case, Bart. Um, Team Buck, you heard him. Write to your Congress and make those calls. Let's get Sergeant Tamarisi out. More coming up. Buck Sexton on the Blaze Radio Network. Spreading freedom across the nation. This is The Buck Sexton Show. The situation in Iraq is getting worse with every day, at least from the perspective of there being some sort of stability, some kind of a contiguous Iraqi state. Maybe we just let them all fight it out and figure it out. But when we say them all, that's becoming a much broader category. That's coming up in a buck brief in just a second. So hold that thought because I want to take a call that had to do with the last hour. Mark has kindly been on hold from Arizona. We're going to take him now. Mark, you're on the Buck Sexton Show. Hi, Buck. Uh, I just want to make a quick comment about the importance to teach our children correct constitutional principles to fight against the public school system. This became clear to me recently uh, uh, when I was watching the uh, TV show Turn. My last name is Rivington. Do you know Rivington Street in Manhattan? I know it very well on the Lower East Side. Yeah, that's named after my sixth great-grandfather, James Rivington, who uh, published the infamous propagandist Royal Gazette. But the good he did was he worked as a spy for George Washington as part of the Culper spy ring. So we're watching uh, Turn, 
hoping that James Rivington will eventually make a showing. And I'm watching it with my uh, my fourth daughter. She's 16. My oldest three are married. And uh, she she notices that uh, she says, you know, why are the British living with the colonists? We don't do that. And I said, well, yeah, we don't do that because the Constitution says we don't do that. This was one of the reasons it's in the Constitution. And uh, so that brought up some other constitutional principles. We brought up uh, the, the NSA and the NSA spying with her. You know, we put it on pause, the show on pause, and brought up the NSA spying with her and said, you know, this is another thing that's against the Constitution. They're, they're looking at everything we do on our cell phones and on the Internet. And she shocked me by saying, you know, we talked about that in school. They say it's okay because if you're not doing anything wrong, what do you have to worry about? Oh, no. And I could not believe what I was hearing because I've strived to teach my children correct principles, but it brought up the opportunity to say, hey, you know, we talked about the general warrant of the, the, the British do, and I said, you know, if they have a general warrant and they come into your house, they can place something in your house and then say they've randomly found it, and the British did this against their political enemies. And you don't think that the NSA could do that to us, place something on your cell phone or on your computer, and then randomly find it? I said, no, it's against the Constitution, and eventually we're going to prove it. That They're breaking the Constitution right now. Eventually we're going to get it right. It might take time. This was about a week ago, and, of course, this recent court decision is a move in the right direction, and I talked about it this with her about it this morning before I came to work. But uh, I think it's very important to realize our children are being taught incorrectly in school in more ways than one, and we need to correct that at home. And that's all I wanted to say. I hear you, Mark. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for teaching your daughter correct constitutional principle. Everything, by the way, in the Bill of Rights, really, or I shouldn't say everything, much of what's in the Bill of Rights. You could um, justify abrogating, taking it away, eliminating, because, I mean, what difference does it make? You're guilty people, come on. If you're innocent, you have nothing to fear, right? Why do you have a right against self-incrimination? Only criminals take that. Why can you plead the fifth? Well, that makes no sense. What, if you have nothing to hide, why can't they go through your stuff? Why do you need a trial by jury? Come on, a judge isn't going to give you a good enough trial? I can go through that. I can go through the Bill of Rights and pick for you different parts of it that... If you, take the, if you take the tone that innocent people have nothing to worry about, hey, no big thing, guess what? You don't need any of the Bill of Rights anymore, do you? Oh, if, you, if the government, we trust the government. Why do we need a First Amendment? Because we trust the government to not infringe upon speech. And we trust the government to allow us to, oh, wait, no, we don't. And we can't. And we shouldn't. It's the same mentality, though. And they're teaching kids this in school, I swear. We are... Sheep heading for the state of slaughter unless we start to turn all this stuff around. Uh, but I digress. All right, I promised you a buck brief. Iraq, big things happening there. We're going to hit it in just a minute. The call in number is 888-900-3393. The broad voice lines are wide open. Plenty of space. Do you want to weigh in? Team Buck, let him up. Back in a minute. Buck Sexton, the Blaze Radio Network. This is the Buck Sexton Show. Iraq is getting worse, not better. Time for a Buck Brief. You are entering the Blaze Threat Ops Center. This is a secure space. All outside comms are down. Prepare to receive the Buck Brief. Syrian warplanes carried out a cross-border attack on Iraqi towns in the last 24 hours which is cited as further evidence of the blurring lines between the two countries' borders as they face an offensive by Islamic extremists, writes CNN. At least 57 Iraqi civilians were killed and more than 120 others were wounded by what local officials say were Syrian warplanes that struck several border 